dodge the traffic and dive into a good book when you travel by train with LNER it's freedom all the way Welcome to The Quiet Coach on Roots from LNER. I'm Clara Antho and on this episode, we are diving quietly into the travel mind of best-selling author Candice Brathwaite. Now, Candice, it's lovely to have you back. Uh, we are going to be getting into your snacks, your hacks and your tracks. But the first thing I ask all the guests on this episode is how do you wind down when you are away? How do I wind down when I'm away? I'm, I'm big on meditation absolutely big on meditation i love youtube <laughs> fab i love i love youtube vlogs i line up my vlogs for travel and i'm in my head i'm like okay when i get to that hotel room and i've had some food we're just going to bang out 5 to 10 vlogs back to back to back that is my jam like everyone's to the point that my son he'll often come up about half an hour before his bedtime and he's like mum can we have some vlog time and he'll just slide into my bed and he like he's got vloggers that I watch that he now loves he's like no the one that's always traveling she's going to Paris she's going and I just pop the vlog on oh I live for a good vlog I love that <laughs> oh, so let me just scrub back quickly <laughs> meditation love meditation did you find it easy to get into absolutely not your brain's so loud. Mm. The minute you decide, okay, I want to be quiet, everything that is sitting beneath your subconscious comes rushing to the top. And I, there are some days where I leave a meditation session and I feel a little bit tighter and more confused than when I sat down. But there are the times when it is the perfect stillness. Like I'm just big on giving it a go multiple times a week. No, I... I struggle with more than 30 minutes. My sweet spot is 20. Yeah. And you can immediately go into that quiet zone because I don't know about you, but I have found, so I generally, generally want to learn from you. Yeah. I have found when I try to meditate, I'm thinking, oh my God, um, I didn't I didn't take this out of the washing machine. Yeah. Oh my God, why did I do that thing I did when you I just, was you like, ha yeah. You have to register it and then just let it go. Like allow it to come in because even trying to stop the thoughts is the opposite of meditation. Mm. Accept that it's come in and then just kind of quickly drag it to the trash of your mind. Cool, maybe later. Okay, yeah. so someone is to see you on a train over the next few months and your eyes are closed. I am I am meditating. And leave, leave you the <laughs> hell alone. Tell me about a place that's inspired you and tell me about a place that's changed you fundamentally. Jamaica has changed me so much that I want to buy a house there with my best friend. So my dad was Jamaican, he's of Jamaican heritage. I have a very, I had, I want to say, a very strained relationship with the island because it's a place I only ever went with him. And then since he died, I, I never returned. And also I, I have a very fraught relationship with his family members who are still living to the point that earlier this year, I went to find my grandfather, who's my dad, dad's father and he completely flat out said he never wanted to hear from me again and I I, I didn't go to the island just for that but I was already in Jamaica there was a part of my heart that was so ready for this reconnection and it was completely shut down and Jamaica has definitely changed me it owes me nothing because what I also found to be most magical on that trip and I took this trip with my best friend who's also Jamaican but had never been was that the island showed me a version of itself that essentially said we don't care who rejects you this is who you are everywhere I went every person I met greeted me with the love I expected a family member to give Jamaica has my heart hands down. And, you know, for all of the quote unquote bad press it gets, it really disgruntles me. I've never been to an island where I felt more at home or more safe. For me to even be thinking about a retirement home there, that's a big deal to me. So, yeah, Jamaica's definitely changed me. It's got a very, it has, it, what you say is so true. There's a mysticism. Oh. That you, can, you can truly feel. Feel. What did he say? There's a natural Dual mystic. mystic. Yeah. And you can feel yeah. it. Mm. You are centered. You are drawn. You're almost hypnotized. Mm. And I was like, yeah, th this is my place. This is my place. And I feel that so deeply. And the place that changed me is definitely Italy. I was an au pair in Italy. It was meant to be for a year, but it was for three months because my dad 
just my, and when I say my dad died, he just dropped dead. There was no build up. There was no sickness. There was no illness. He caught a cold that became the flu, that became pneumonia, that became a heart attack. And this was all in the space of four to five days. And so I, I came into Naples or Napoli as a little girl and I had to leave as a big woman. Mm. I just didn't have a choice. Mm. It was like your support system has gone as much as you're grieving, you need to buck your ideas up. And it's so sad forward slash hilarious that like when he died, I remember being like, well, who's going to book my ticket home now? Because <laughs> yeah. that was one of the last threads of our communication. He was like, I know you're coming home for Christmas. I'm going to sort your ticket out. And I was kind of like, well, and my host family sorted out everything, but it was like this immediate switch that went in my life that you can never flick back. It's like, oh, you've got to put your big girl pants on now because the person who's typically, you know, when you're 20, 21, you know, I know people talk about being a teenager. I would say 20 to 25 is the most gaslighting experience I've ever lived through. Horrendo. Because the world goes adult, tax goes, give me your money. So, you know, you think you're doing it. No, the emotions, You're a the, baby adult. the understanding. And so to be rushed into like proper adulthood, I remember waiting for my taxi because my flight maybe was at like 6 a.m. I remember waiting for my taxi, sobbing. Just, you know, when you're crying so much, no sounds actually coming out. There's just a vibration and emotion and constant water. And I'm wearing this huge coat that my dad used to call the black widow coat because no, the Scottish widow. Remember that advert? Mm -hmm, with the, mm -hmm. He was like, oh, you got your Scottish widow coat on. He used to love it. It had a huge black hood. And I just remember looking up at the stars and the song that was playing was Meet Me Halfway by Black Eyed Peas. And I was just like, I have no idea if I'm going to live to see tomorrow. I just, I, I didn't understand how everyone in the world was still moving like normal. I was like, are you crazy? Like, I remember getting to the check-in and the girl smiling and me being like, do you want me to wipe that? So it's like, don't you know my dad's just died, yeah? How is yeah. this world still trying to operate as normal? Mm. So yeah, that. For, for better or for worse, that place completely changed me. I mean, those two places you mentioned, it's so interesting, like how they stand next to each other. Yeah. Because the place where you thought you would find family didn't give it to you in the way you wanted, mm -hmm. but gave it back to you in a completely, I guess, arguably in a, in a, in a deeper rooted way, actually. Absolutely. Ancestrally. Yes. And in a place where ironically has been arguably maybe not the safest place for a black woman mm -hmm. a place where you're bringing up somebody else's family yes gave you more gave you more love than than, than your blood than than i than i ever could have imagined mm. and you know who's to say how or why it works out that way but i'm just i'm like oh you you got that host family because god the universe knew what was coming Mm. And was like, I need her to be as safe as possible. My host dad had only lost his mum six months before. Everything was still so real and so raw. And I was worried about the kids. I was like, no, they've got school tomorrow. Like, I can't go home. Like, we've got plans. They've got clubs. They're like, you're someone's kid. And that someone's just died. And I found out in the most, in, in I think, the most unkind way, you know, his work colleagues kept emailing me and I emailed them thinking it was spam. <laughs> and then they were like, call us. And it was just all that. And I remember emailing my dad in that moment and being like, dad, when you get to work tomorrow, make sure you get Rob to check the servers because everyone's emailing me. This, It was just, so, yeah, not a vibe. Mm. But fundamental change nonetheless. And a change that Clara, uh, this is going to sound so weird to everyone listening, a change that I would never change. If my dad didn't die then, and I don't mean it in a saccharine way, you genuinely wouldn't know me because I would have become a partner at his law firm. Facts. Every, when I look back, everything I did was for his applause, his praise, his sign off. And so I would have gone to law school. I maybe would have had a heart attack at 45 or a breakdown, but I would have essentially built a life that made Richard Brown proud. 
not Candice Brathwaite. Mm -hmm. And I do sit here sometimes and I'm like, as much as I miss you, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade my freedom and my capacity for life to have you back and for me to not know what that feels like. And you know what, for the woo-woo listeners, he sees that and he knows that. Yeah. And I think that's okay. Yeah. You know, we're going to get into um, your snacks, tricks <laughs> and your hacks. Um, so snacks, what food can you not travel without? And actually, what food will you travel for? Oh, okay. This is good. Oh my gosh, guys, don't, don't. Don't laugh because sometimes the things that come out of my mouth, like, I'm like, I can't believe I've become this person. I am not traveling without a protein bar or protein shake. Oh, oh please. I, I, I'm just That's like, fine. I'm like, yuck. Are you really that person? It's just not happening. I'm also not traveling without, this is a weird one, but typically now every hotel has like a coffee pod machine. So I have matcha pods. I'm traveling with my matcha pods. Thank okay, you. My rider is so dry next to someone like Mario Carey's because all I care about is peanut M and M's. <gasps> Hang on, the ones the ones you can only get in America in the red packet. Le the, the yellow peanuts. ones hit, yeah, oh. has, to, has to be peanut. Right, like, right, 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 right. A chocolate M and M is sacrilege. Don't even bother. Just have a dairy milk and don't waste my time. Peanut M and M. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just smarties in, in a, in a like, cute outfit. Do you know what I mean? Just like, I, I get it. I peanut get it. M oh yes, those are my snacks. What food would I trap? That's a hot. Why am I acting like I don't know? Jerk pork in Jamaica on the open grill? Yeah, we're traveling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boston, we're Boston, Boston Bay. We, we are, tra oh my God. With a side of planted, don't get me started today. My mouth is actually watering <laughs> a little bit. I'm quite hungry. All right, tracks. Let's get into music. Candice, I know you like to shake a little leg. You like to, you like to shimmy a little bit. Um, what songs take you straight back to a place that you've been? What, what are those sort of, I guess, time travel tunes for you? Meet Me Halfway by Black Eyed Peas. Mm -hmm. It was the song of the moment when my dad died. So, and now it doesn't bring pain. It's just a, there is a song called The Prayer by Block Party. Oh, tonight make me unstoppable mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and I will chant. I what? So like that song is just the, the soundtrack to the debauchery of my 20s. Like you'd leave Friday night, not know where you're waking up, just pack some clean knickers and roll with it. Oh <laughs> my God. Yeah, some, people, some people didn't even do that. <laughs> just roll up some clean knickers. And like, I remember like, it, it once house sitting with a friend who was house sitting for someone he knew who was an ad exec and she lived in what basically felt like a mansion and gave us just like all this money for food and we had bare house parties like oh god not that I crave that life but that tune it feels hopeful and youthful and now that I'm deep in my fitness phase there's a there's a beat to it that is um terribly magnetic when you're running the final track is a track called wish you were here by black coffee oh banger oh <laughs> I just feel like crying already so I, I I had a trip to Greece with my best mate my daughter and her daughter and the trip, we were taken on this trip. And I remember one day we were taken out on a private yacht and that song was playing and I was flying a drone and I was looking at my best mate and our kids. And I was like, these two little black girls are on a private yacht in the middle of this gorgeous sea. And I don't even want to destabilize their minds about how we got here. But this is such a powerful moment. Mm. Now, every time I hear that track, I think of that. And I think of Ibiza. I love that song. And you know what, as you tell that story, I really want people to understand this isn't a celebration of like materialism. No. It's about, it's about possibility, isn't possibility. it? Possibility. Yeah. And you know, I find it really, it gives, look, I'm getting uh, goosebumps. My nan came to this country wanting to be a nurse and she had to be a cleaner. On a boat. On a boat. My nan is still alive. Do you know how crazy it is that she's still alive and I'm still alive? And in that lifetime, she's watching the very image of her live a life that she wouldn't have even known how to utter because it was never sold as a possibility. What do you mean you can just present on breakfast television? What do you mean you can just write books? What do you mean you can, you can live so boldly as a black woman? So the yacht isn't even about the yacht. It's mm. about... The stillness of mind, the enjoyment, 
the beauty. Like we're allowed to enjoy. Oh. Yeah, you are yeah. allowed to enjoy. Absolutely. Um, let me ask you this. Are you a podcast girly or a playlist girly when you're on the beach doing nothing? Playlist. Right. Playlist. Play in, in another life, I was a DJ. Now, it still might happen in this lifetime. I'm doing I'm doing my Snoop Dogg side quest vibe. So I'm like, I might do some DJ. I might also bring out an MC track just for bands. Now I have to. <laughs> I'm a playlist M girl. MC name? Oh, I've not, I've not really thought about that yet. I bet Bode would say something like MC Half Pint or something. Something. I say I call you call you like MC. Can you see? <laughs> Write that down. Write that down. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. But Thank I'm, yeah, you. I'm a, and I am that person on the beach who has the speaker and is like playing the music out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? Anytime that happens on public transport, I curse people. <laughs> but for some reason, on a beach, on I don't. Beach, I don't mind it. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, I can't believe you haven't mentioned Coldplay. The oh true, the true, the true loves of your life. No, your Coldplay, your Coldplay standing I is so entertaining. It. Listen, honestly, I, I, and, and I say this as much as I can, especially on podcasts, because it's such great evergreen content. Coldplay are the best living pop band in the world. I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear no defense. I don't want to, like, if you've not been to one of their live shows, Please do. If you can get to see them whilst they're still alive, Chris Martin's energy wraps around any stadium 10 times. The positivity, the music, of course, tunes like Fix You, Shiver, Adventures of a Lifetime. Babe, you set me off now. <laughs> I just, I have to give you that <laughs> you space. Set me off. I have to give you that multicolored. <laughs> Grips oh, denim. And then when all, all the coloured powder comes out at the concert. Oh. And the light and the wristbands. And the ri oh, God. No, it is. Do you know what? I think there are so many people who are secret Coldplay fans. It's like, baby, Why just be it free. Why is a secret? It's okay. I think, I think there was definitely a phase where it, it was perceived as like not cool to like oh. I think because I think because they're so earnest. Yeah. And so, and so loving. And I think we're kind of scared of that as people. Yeah, like we're a bit sceptical. Yeah. No, I... I, yeah. I but the songs are great. The songs are... And they've got... And they are the only pop group in my opinion who have a song for every moment mm. giving birth a funeral your wedding when someone's dumped you when you've fallen in love for the first time they tick every single emotional box well listen put it this way Ooh, those men... I'm gonna make my characters fall in love to Coldplay you Write must that down. <laughs> you must finally um, your hacks tips and tricks that make your travelling experience more enjoyable now you did mention in our previous chat cubes yes Love a good packing cube. For me, I know this sounds so basic, but just always having a phone charger at the ready. So like the, the port one and a plug and a standard plug because you don't know what situation you're going to be stuck in, especially on trains. It's like, does it need a plug or does it need a USB or even now a USB-C? USB so like I've always got my charger good to go. Don't be that. Oh, let me bring the mic close. Don't be that person that when we get to the barriers or to see the inspector, you're then fumbling for your ticket. Oh my God, don't stress. Stress. I don't know why that aggravates me so much. Be prepared. You know where we're heading. Like, get the screenshot ready. Get the digital wallet out. Like, don't be the... Uh, <laughs> be, be prepared. So yeah. my hack is... And, that, and this sounds simple, but I don't think people do it enough re because it's free. Reserve your seat. Oh my gosh. Reserve. Do you know what a bad man I feel like when seat. I get on a busy train that no one expected to be busy and I just hit the ticket like, yeah, reserve your seat. Don't you feel like such a grown up when the inspector's like, tickets, 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 and you're just like, Me. here you go. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I'm sat here in the seat that I paid for exactly. like a grown up. Oh, FYI, by the way, you know, when you go on an LNER train, yeah. little QR code in the back of the seat, yeah. scan it, table service. Since when? Since, you don't have to worry crazy. about that. Since the LNER -E okay. gods decided. So you want a little snacky snack? <laughs> scan the QR code after you've had your ticket checked. Or even before, get your snacks to, okay, to your chair. love that. Just so <laughs> you know. Candice, we are nearly at the end of our Quiet Coach episode. Now, before you go, I ask all my guests this question. What have you learned about yourself as a traveller? in your life so what far? What have I learned about myself as a traveller? I'm very good at going with the flow. I don't necessarily, I'm not the traveller that needs an itinerary. 
I will walk for miles. I also adore walking. And when I travel, I prefer to walk than being an Uber or be underground because of course I'm trying to see the scenery. So yeah, I'm absolutely, you can't destabilize me when traveling. Oh, flight delayed. Oh, well, cool. We'll figure it out. Not that restaurant. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. As long as they don't lose your luggage. Oh girl, don't make me cry. No. <laughs> No one will be losing your luggage anytime soon, I promise. Luggage gods, don't do that to her. Candice, thank you so very much for joining me on The Quiet Coach with LNER. And don't forget, Candice's new book, Manifesto, is out now. The new fiction book is, is currently it's in process. Coming. It's in process. We're not trying to pressure her. We're just going to keep you excited. And if you like what you heard today, why not rate and review it wherever you get your podcasts and make sure you follow us. Dodge the traffic and dive into a good book. When you travel by train with LNER, it's freedom all the way. Roots from LNER, a distorted production.